YouTube what's good with it man it's your boy Neo Cannabis and I'm back with another video so today I wanted to hop on here and inform you about this deceptive slimy tactic that distribution companies so these are the companies that you will buy product from wholesale when you're running your cannabis retail business either delivery or a storefront dispensary will try to use on you in order to essentially scam you and this is a story that happened to us where we were left with a large invoice because this company that i will mention in the video essentially tricked us and used like a bait and switch tactic to deceptively offload a lot of products on us it gave us all these promises and didn't fulfill their side of the agreement. But let's get into it. This company called Punch Edibles, what they did was, and this is what can happen in newer markets when these newer brands start trying to gain some market share and try to get their products in different retailers, different stores, different delivery services. They'll come to you and this is what this company Punch Edibles did and they'll have a sales rep who's eager to get on your menu. They'll be like, hey, we'll just load you guys up with a bunch of our products. Don't worry about it. Just put all of our products on the menu. I'm gonna build you guys out a product launch kit of some of our most popular products. And don't worry about it, man. Just put it on the menu. When you pay us back, you pay it back. If you can't sell it, just call us up and we'll take it all back. No questions asked. These companies, like punch edibles these people who they are in the business of deceptive sales they'll act like they're your friend give you all these promises and say basically okay we're just gonna give you all this product and when you sell it you pay us back if you can't sell it then just call us up and we'll take it back free of charge whatever product we get back we would give you a credit for that amount so you wouldn't owe us anything as the story goes along of course they build out the order and then they ship it to us when i say ship it they'll have to send it to their distribution company the distribution company comes and delivers the order to our facility and this order this is a huge order like fifteen thousand dollars worth of products in our heads we're thinking okay whatever if we can't sell it we'll just contact the sales rep and they'll just take it back. So it's not really a risk on us because they're taking all the risk because we, at the end of the day, if we don't want it, we'll just give it right back and everything will be credited. Whatever we sold, of course we will pay for, whatever we did not sell and we sent back to their company, then it would be null and void because that amount would just be credited and balanced out. As the story goes along, they build out this huge order, give it to us, and then we're not able to move the product in an ample amount of time. Of course, when we build out our menu and pick products, and as we partner with brands, we want to get products that are moving. They're not sitting on our shelves. They're in and out within one to two weeks span, a month at most. So when the products that they gave us, this huge order is not moving because there's not really any demand for the brand because they're, again, this is a brand that's trying to get into the, the market. They're not really established. They just wanna try to get some market share. So they're gonna say they'll do anything to get onto your shelves and get onto your menu. And once the product's not moving, we hit them back a couple months later and like it's still ten, twelve thousand dollars worth of product and the order was maybe fifteen thousand dollars. There's still ten, twelve thousand dollars worth of product that we can't sell. And this is where the bait and switch happens and the deceptive marketing comes into play. Maybe we can take some of the blame for not doing the due diligence and not having actual contractual written agreement in place but this is when maybe the sales rep that promised us they got fired or they're not there with the company anymore and now the brand has amnesia and they're like wait what we never said that yeah we can't take none of this back so it's kind of just on you now all the risk is on our end and it's like we're stuck with the order within this industry these are some of the games that these brands and distribution companies in this case it wasn't a distribution company it was an actual brand punch edibles again that is the brand these are the games that they'll play they'll have amnesia people won't uphold their end of the agreement because again 
remember cannabis is such a new industry there's a lot of bad actors and terrible companies that we have to flush out of the industry because in some of these markets like california new mexico oklahoma oregon the barrier to entry is not that hard out of those states maybe california is the hardest but again like if you're in oakland and la if you have the right connections or you have that social equity component as far as uh, you are affected by the war on drugs and you can qualify for a license or you can partner with a person or another company that is a social equity applicant and you can get fast tracked with them to get a license then you know you can wiggle your way into the industry and that's where these bad actors come into place and they want to get into the market and not uphold agreements and things of that sort and that's where i come and take some responsibility because anytime you do any type of business dealings or do any type of strategic partnership with somebody any type of promos or like how we were doing a strategic partnership as far as they're just giving us the inventory and we're taking a chance on them we're putting their products on our menu and we're just selling it and then as we sell it, we'll be able to disperse them payments. It's like a consignment type of thing. That's when things get cloudy and where we take responsibility and where we've improved that we do not take floaters on non-established brands because we've had situations where it's worked out and we don't take people just showing up at our doorstep with large amounts of orders that we didn't really agree upon but we just left it up to the sales rep to build out the order these bait and switch tactics is something you know in some of these newer markets and things like this they don't really work out anymore in california because the retailers like us were more experienced and we know that brands have a tendency to do that and have amnesia when we would handshake agree on different deals and then now certain sales reps get fired and the higher ups don't want to uphold the deals that the sales rep made with us when we're trying to give back the product that we don't want anymore. That is something that when you're in these newer markets like the New Jersey's, the New York's, Massachusetts, Vermont's, you want to be aware and you want to be cognizant of brands who may try to do slimy tactics like punch edibles and then the cherry on top the owner of punch edibles and i'm gonna pop it up on the screen the owner had the audacity to try to friend me and message me on linkedin and to try to send me a threat basically saying you owe this huge balance and if you don't pay it we're gonna get our lawyers involved and sue you people just in this industry is literally crazy you don't want to uphold your agreements on certain partnerships and then you want to act like you have amnesia and then try to threaten me saying you're going to sue me yeah good luck with that but that's how i'm going to start putting these slimy companies and slimy founders on blast on my channel definitely wanted to bring this information and these slimy tactics that these distribution companies and that these brands will try to use in newer markets to offload a bunch of product onto you and use you as a guinea pig to get their product within the marketplace. And then if it doesn't sell, when you say we don't want this product anymore, they'll try to have amnesia and forget the deal that you agreed upon. And then they don't want to take the product back anymore. And you're stiffed with the bill. So it's always important, like I said, any type of partnership, any type of business dealings. And this is just in general, always have a written signed agreement between both parties so in the instance that one of the parties does have some type of amnesia or doesn't want to uphold their side of the agreement you have proof to show to them that hey you guys signed on this this was the deal that we agreed to it was a consignment thing in the instance that we didn't want the product anymore we could just give it back and everything is even from there i feel like this is some valuable information that a lot of you guys in the newer markets can use from this experience that i encountered i hope that for me explaining it to you guys you never have to deal with anything like that within your journey within the industry if this information and if this story is valuable please smash that like button share comment subscribe if you're new and until next time peace i'm out